Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the makeshift blue blop effect. Yeah, that's quite the name, but that's why I see it as um, online. So I'm going to use blue blop for the name. So we saw where it is exactly in the preview. So let's go ahead, go ahead and get started. I have press seven on my numpad and hit Control Alt and zero for the um to set the camera to the viewpoint. Now I'm gonna hit Control Shift and A, go to, which allows us to add a mesh or curve, or we can go to add in our 3D viewpoint down here. I'm gonna go to select and we're going to create a circle. Good, so let's just put this circle in the center for reference. And let's increase it a bit by pressing S and scaling out. I'm pulling out with the mouse button. So we have our curve here and we can see it's a curve because when we press tab to go into edit mode, we can see that we have handles here. And fortunately the handle type is already is automatically set to automatic and that's exactly what we need. So this effect becomes harder if you're not using automatic. So I would suggest use automatic um, as the handle type. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, if you press B, you see that in edit mode you see the handle type and you have automatic vector aligned free and toggle free align and what we have here is automatic so we're going to be using automatic for this right here so we're going to have our blue come out from the left so we're going to go ahead and set a keyframe oh in fact before we even do that let's duplicate this scale it down so duplicate with shift and d S and scale down then we're just gonna hold this arrow with X arrow here and drag it across to about here good and we're gonna select our circle once again we're gonna go into our properties editor then go to our curve panel under our properties editor we're gonna change this to 2d and by 2d allows it to fill we'll set a color in a bit and it's going to collapse shape and collapse geometry and collapse path animation and active spline and we're going to go to shape keys which is open we're going to add two shape keys the first being the basis the second being key one so we have everything set here with key one selected just going to go and select the leftmost um curve point curve vertice and we're going to Move, press the X, pull on the X. I'm going to pull on the X and just push it out a bit and press tab. We may have to do a bit more editing on this, but for now, at least we have it. I'm going to do the same with this. We're going to go to shape, make this 2D, collapse shape, and then with this now, the smaller circle, let's zoom in here. We're going to A to D select, A to select everything. Then we're going to go to W and we're going to press. S for subdivide and that will give us some more vertices to play about with here and we can go to subdivide from curve um, I think it's in here somewhere segments subdivide good so we have these curves right here and what we're going to do we're just going to pull these curves until it joins up with this circle right and but before we do that we're going to create three shape keys good so on the first shape key we're going to make sure the first shape key is selected and let's pull out and selecting these three vertices on the right hand side pull out and we're just going to lift them up until they cover the circle now this is good this is a good time to use our wireframe mode so we're going to press Z so that we can see it. We're gonna try and make it as close to the circle as we possibly can. All right. Next, we're gonna drag these in. All right, so we're gonna move these two vertices here and just drag them in. Right. Till we get something like this. So if we check it, if we pull it out, you can see that we're getting a sort of um, value that's joining with the circle and moving from the circle. 
Let's go ahead and just edit these a bit. So there's a bit more circular. Yeah. Good. And next for the second keyframe, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this to the middle. So make sure everything is selected with A. So A to deselect and then A to select everything. And we're gonna scale it up with S and try to make it so that it covers the circle as much as possible. I've not been precise here, but you can be more precise. And check the value moves in and out. So we have our two keyframes here. Keyframe one and keyframe two. Good. So we're going to keyframe these keyframes. He's going to keyframe these keys to give us our loop effect. You know, I think this looks okay. So let's go ahead and keyframe everything. Good. First, we want it to start from the middle. So we're going to bring this up to one. Insert keyframe, then go to frame 25 and have it come out. Good. So we have our movement out and in. Good. And then in between these movements, we're going to set this to zero. Insert keyframe and have it stretch out. So, right, we get an effect like this. Good, and we see we're starting to get that bloop effect that we want. Good. Then, on the next keyframe, we're gonna move on to about 40. We're going to have this keyframe come down. Insert keyframe. I should name them so that you know what keyframe we're using, what key we're using, sorry. Um, I'm just gonna say, call this first key translate and call this second key um, bloop. Good, so the bloop, oh, try name them in reverse order, translate. Translates and I'm gonna call this bloop. Good, so the bloop is for this effect here, which creates this sort of liquid bloop. And the second one is translates for moving this circle. So we're finished with moving the circle now. And we'll just, and now we want to move the bloop back to the circle. Good, so we're animating the bloop back to the circle. So what we did here first is that we translate the circle as well as move the bloop. Good, and then we're returning the bloop now. Now to make this effect a bit more authentic now, we're gonna go back to the circle, which we had made a keyframe for. Just select both of them, making the circle the active. And we do that with shift. And as we move down, to about here. Good, we want our key to come out, our circle to come out here. And I'm gonna insert keyframe. So, from zero, up. Oh. Let's make it a bit more, let's make it about here. We, there's a zero, place keyframe, and then about here. About frame 35, let's have it out and see it return to zero. So we get something like this. May need to move it around a bit. Let's just bring this up so that we can see. Let's go to our dope sheet editor and let's see how we can. Um, Play about with these keys to get better effect here. Yeah, that looks better. Right, let's come out of wireframe more to see that it looks good. 
Select the camera. Right. And there we have a makeshift bloop. Let's go ahead and give it some color here so we can see a bit better. Right. And there are various things that we can do to sort of increase the liquid effect of this. Um, materials. I can go ahead and give you some clues. You know, um, we can use the power of the relative keyframe as well as the power of this drop down box here and new shape from mix. So, using new shape from mix and changing the relative keyframe to the keyframe above the new shape from mix will allow us to add more. Um, variance to this bloop you know, so that we have a more smooth effect here good but this concludes our tutorial if you enjoy this tutorial give it a thumbs up if you have any questions be sure to ask I'll do my best to answer them um, you know I have a lot to learn so you know this that that sort of information is helpful so please leave your constructive advice i appreciate that and if you like this tutorial go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button and until i see you again with another tutorial get up and design a new door later